What would you buy if somebody gave you half a million dollars? 500 grand dream cars. There are so many amazing options, both new and used. I mean, you could just go out and buy a 488 Pista or order a 765 LT and have an amazing car with a warranty with more performance than any of the other things that we're about to mention. But is that the best option? No. To me, the answer is obviously easy. It's a manual transmission Lamborghini Murcielago LP640, one of the 29 US cars. I don't actually know if 500 grand, if I could find one for you right now, I know where pretty much all of them are and most people that have them, like me, never intend to sell them. But it's a fair number if you found the right car and that is where I would vote with my own checkbook. Many people would say that a Carrera GT is better and you could buy the absolute worst example of a Carrera GT for about 500 grand. It would need a bunch of miles or a bad Carfax, maybe even a bad title, but that would be a fair number and several have changed hands in that vicinity fairly recently, even though a good car is still probably 700, 750 grand. But that would be possible. Honestly, I prefer the LP640 over the Carrera GT. Most people will hate me for that and they think the Carrera GT is the greatest thing that's ever happened. I like them. They're very pretty. They are not very comfortable. They are extremely expensive to maintain and they're not nearly as rare as manual LP640s. So I'm comfortable with my pick. Everybody else is going to be wrong. But I asked my friends what they would buy for 500 grand and these were their answers. My half million dollar choice is a 200 mile an hour 1994 Jaguar XJ220 Coupe. Only 280 were built in the 90s. I found a Le Mans Blue one, 1200 miles, previously owned by the Lars Anderson Museum. It comes in just under $500,000. If I had half a million dollars to spend on a vehicle, I'd probably choose a Kamaz T4 trophy truck. Now, I'm not exactly sure where you get one from, but I'm sure if you turned up in Moscow with half a million dollars, you'd find Vlad the Lad and he'd sort it out for you. They've got 1150 brake horsepower, a 13 litre turbocharged straight six diesel Cummins engine, a thousand litre fuel tank, so you go about 100 miles before you need to refuel. It probably pulled everything in this video backwards in third gear and it weighs nearly 10 tons. It is one beast of a truck. For those of you with a half a million dollars worth of cash burning a hole in your pocket, you're going to want to pick yourself up one of these. I'm talking about the new McLaren 765LT. The LT stands for long tail and at just under 3,000 pounds, it's 754 horsepower. Twin turbo V8 will get you from 0 to 60 in about 2.7 seconds and should easily run the car into the nines in the stock trim. In fact, Ikenu Racing ran an 8.9 second quarter mile with its sibling, the 720S, with just a few minor modifications. Although this car hasn't yet been released, the car will be offered for just under $400,000, leaving enough money left over to break the car in during the next Gumball 3000 rally. That's my choice. Now our budget this week is $500,000, and that is solidly out of my wheelhouse. I'm usually the comic relief for all this madness or any road trip Ed and I find ourselves on and I'll allow him to use as many 50 cent words as he can because my vocabulary is down around $100,000. But there was an episode of the original Top Gear, the UK Top Gear, when they came to the United States and Jeremy Clarkson drove an SLS AMG Black Edition Mercedes. It was a coupe and he had it drifting sideways around North Wilkesboro Speedway that car is incredible and you can still pick up a beautiful example for five hundred thousand dollars so my pick the sls amg black edition mercedes all right so for my choice of a five hundred thousand dollar car i was split between two really flashy cars one is the aventador svj the reason is is that the svj is such a step up all the way back since the first Aventador. The very first Aventador is really clunky, not that nice inside in comparison to its future models. Sure, it sounded good, but it just didn't feel crazy enough to me as Lamborghini. I feel as though the SVJ definitely feels crazier, it looks crazier, feels more race car-like, and it overall represents what Lamborghini is today in the modern era. But if I were to choose between that and the brand spanking new 4 GT, it would be very difficult for me. The 4 GT has such an amazing legacy going back to the GT40 at Le Mans and along with the 4 GT from 2005, that is a tough choice for me. The 4 GT is such a beautiful car and when I saw it at Geneva the first time, I couldn't stop staring at it. And at the end of the day, I think it's hard when you see a car that you cannot stop staring at and it captures your imagination and your soul, that's probably the winner. 
Really, there's only one 90 supercar left that you can buy in that budget, and it's the Jaguar XJ220. I don't even care that it doesn't have a V12. For me, it's all about the styling, the nostalgia, and the fact that you can buy an iconic 90 supercar that does over 200 miles an hour for less than half a million dollars. $500,000. Now, I don't need to tell you that's a tremendous amount of money to spend on a single vehicle. But in order to pull off a purchase like that, I probably am gonna to have to sell my house, which means my pick this week is one I'm gonna to have to be able to live in. My pick this week is an Earth Roamer LTS. Now, Earth Roamer makes made to order overland vehicles based on Ford's F550 and 750 Super Cab chassis. Now, I'm gonna to have to pick this up used slightly because the Earth Roamers command a premium price point and a waiting list that goes in well into next year. But that's my pick at $500,000. I'll be honest with you. If you gave me $500,000, I'd buy 100 $5,000 cars. But if I had to choose just one, I'd either go with a Porsche 993 Turbo or 997 GT2 RS in collector quality and just watch that thing rise in value. For $500,000, I'd be buying a custom luxury race transporter and motor coach. So we're talking about carrying multiple cars, multiple bikes, having the lifts, having all your tools and everything built in custom because who needs a house when you have a luxury transporter and you can take all of your vehicles with you and go track to track to track. As silly as I wanted to be this week at $500,000, I would be lying to myself and to you guys if I said I would buy anything other than the Lexus LFA. I love the fact that you have the Japanese luxury company known for comfort and just good ride and reliability going crazy and producing this V10 supercar with the best sounding exhaust note of any vehicle ever produced. I will argue that forever. In a perfect world with half a million dollars, I would walk into my nearest Ford dealer and drive off in a brand new Ford GT. But since we don't live in a perfect world, I would do the next best thing, and that would be I'd call a park place in Bellevue, Washington on their 993 uh, Porsche 911 Turbo S. It's a Zenith blue over Metropolitan blue leather car. 993s are my favorite generation of Porsche. And uh, the Turbo S is something that you'll never see on, on the streets or in the wild. For $500,000, got to be a Ford GT. My favorite styling of all the supercars. No, wait, it's a V6. Oh, I want a Ford GT with the V8 from the GT500 Shelby Mustang. 760 horsepower and the right rumble. Do it, Ford. For 500 grand, I would choose a Jaguar XJ220. It was faster than the F40 back in the day, faster than the Diablo held the top speed record until the McLaren F1 beat it. And it's just so good looking. A half a million dollars. Okay, this week, I'm gonna recommend a recreation car. Now stick with me. Back in the 60s, when Ford was being Ferrari, another manufacturer who had already won Le Mans five times was secretly building a prototype to beat the both of them. It had a quad cam, five liter, 500 horsepower V12 shoehorned into one of the most beautiful aluminum monocoque bodies ever created. It was so gorgeous, it made the GT40 look like a dump truck. And it was seriously quick. In 1967, it set the close course speed record in Great Britain at 161 mile an hour average, and that wasn't eclipsed until 1999 when the McLaren F1 defeated it. Now, I'm talking about the magnificent Jaguar XJ13. Now, there's only one of them, and we're never gonna get the driver. So, that is the perfect reason to make a recreation car. Now, over the years, there's only been a few that have been correctly made to the original factory specifications with the aluminum monocoque and the aluminum skin and the glorious Jaguar V12 singing to you behind your head through a dozen velocity stacks as God intended. Now last year, one sold at auction for close to a half a million dollars. And I think in this crazy world, 
That is money well spent. Hey, what's up everybody? Mike from Max Speed. So with $500,000, you could buy a ton of awesome cars. You could even buy 50 $10,000 project cars, or you could buy one awesome car. For me, that's the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ. 6.5 liter V12, 759 horsepower and a 3,600 pound chassis. All wheel drive with an 8,500 RPM red line. Plus it's a Lamborghini. It's got that amazing road presence that crazy prestige factor of a Lamborghini, and those two things will be forever. It'll always look good, it'll always sound good, and it'll always give you that prestige factor. So for a $500,000 budget, I would buy this. Uh, Audi Sport Quattro is one of the 200 something cars that's been produced for the rally car. It uh, used to be a 300 something horsepower, and my friends, car here because this car is not for sale actually has been uh, tuned up to 450 horsepower well it's just look it's just uh, Saxon wheels that's what I would buy for this budget you see this right here is a photo of my SVJ and my Pista right in my garage and one of my things is which one is the better car under half a million dollars and so my favorite car under five hundred thousand dollars it would have to be i know it's a tough choice but it would have to be the svj and i know it's going to be tough because it we would say that pista is prettier than the svj but really in general i think the svj is just a better car at half a million than the pista so there you have it my favorite car under half a million and you can find a really nice clean svj new or used right at the 500k mark or below Oh, hello. Just doing a little light reading. You caught me breaking a mental sweat as well. Uh, my choice for this week's $500,000 challenge would be the Jaguar XJ220. Amazing looking car. Some people didn't like it, compared it to a catfish. Although it did have a twin turbo Cosworth V6 engine, it was pretty heavy, never really caught on, but if you're going to own a piece of automotive history, this would be the one. Now, back to some light reading. Hey, I'm up at Merit Partners today where they have a lot of my favorite cars. One of my absolute favorites is the air-cooled 993 RS Club Sport. I would get it in signal green. Another of my favorite cars in the 500k range is the 997 GT3 RS 4.0. There were only 17 in paint to sample in the US and I would choose Maritime Blue. Another absolute favorite, you might be able to find 500k price range for a high mileage one, is the 458 Special Aperta, one of the last mid-engine special series cars that's going to be naturally aspirated, and it's a drop top, a limited series of only 500, and it's a great driver. So for $500,000, there's an amazing array of cars that are available to you, but my first choice, because you know I love Lamborghini, would be the Super Veloce version of the car behind me. And that's the Aventador SV750-4. Or alternatively, if you want something a little bit more old school, maybe not as refined and a little bit harder on you, the Murcielago 670 SV. Those would be my two choices for $500,000. If you have a half a million dollars, you need to already be on your way to your broker to go find a Lexus LFA. Like, what would you buy for $500,000 is the most inefficient way to ask, what color do you want your LFA to be? There's nothing like it in the world. If they had a $500,000 bill, the Lexus LFA would be on the face of it. It's, it's that simple. Go buy one. Go buy one now. For half a million dollars, if I just won the magical lottery that I don't play, I have two directions to go, of course. Now the first one, if I was just feeling saucy and rough and tumble like back when I was 20, I would go out and get a bright orange McLaren Mark 8F Can-Am car. Yes! Big block, nasty power, like a thousand horsepower, giant velocity stacks that'll swallow a small child. It is a big block Can-Am car doorstop of doom and glory. Yes, your head's out in the airstream. And basically, if you drive one of those things well and sideways, you make every modern race car driver look like the biggest sissy who's ever walked planet Earth. Now my second choice, which would only happen if I magically came into money and everything else in life was okay, because I've actually already had one of these, would be a Countach. And mine I got with everything in the world that I owned back when they weren't worth anything because everybody just thought they were an overly complex, delicate, sand cask, hand craftsmanship, Italian piece of garbage. The trouble is now everybody thinks those uh, handcrafted, beautiful Italian pieces of garbage are worth tons of money. So unfortunately, for me to have that beautiful masochistic relationship once more, 
I would have to spend my half a million dollars, most likely, to go out and find a really glorious Countach. And when it's running right, I would probably have a wonderful time. 500 grand? There is one car that I want that you can get a really nice one for 500 grand. And that's a Lamborghini Countach. Any one of the pre-anniversary cars, the latest one you can get, the latest, nicest one you can get for 500 grand. That is the one car that I would want at that price range. I instantly go to the Countach downdraft quattro valve. It's the only four cam carbureted car. It's the fastest of the Countach, wide body, low with or without a wing. I mean, it screams 80s. It has no comfort and nobody cares. For $500,000, you could pretty much buy whatever you want, but at that price point, you can buy something extremely cool, extremely fun, and have collector's value so that it increases over time, which is why I would go for this Ferrari Dino GTS. This particular Dino has coach work by Scaglietti, designed by Pininfarina, and honestly, you can't get much better value for your money at $500,000 than an old Ferrari. They just keep going up in value. And this has a manual transmission, so it's going to be fun to drive if you really want to. Hey guys, so today we've got a pretty big number, um, especially in Canadian dollars. Uh, it's actually hard to spend it all, so uh, we're going to go ahead and say a 2019 Porsche GT2 RS, which leaves a couple hundred thousand left over, so why not a Ford Raptor as a tow vehicle with uh, a, tr a nice enclosed trailer and uh, save a lot of money for course fees later on. Hey Vinwicky, Matt Farah from The Smoking Tire here. The heavy hitter car, what would I buy for $500,000? Asterisk, assuming I didn't already have a Countach. A Countach, I would. If I didn't already have a Lamborghini Countach, I would buy a great Countach for $500,000. Since I do have one, uh, humble brag, nah, just a brag. Uh, I would say the next 500k I would spend would be either on the best 4 GT around, 04 to 06 4 GT in Quicksilver, four option car. I would pay for that combo, or I would get a 911 reimagined by Singer because uh, they are beautiful to look at, they're beautiful to drive, and if you can get one, it's instantly worth double what you paid for it. Hey everyone, Sean Kutnick here with Dream Car Exchange and the $500,000 price point, which is by far to me the most difficult one. So for me, it needs to have three pedals, manual transmission, it needs to be exclusive, and it needs to be iconic. So. I thought back to a car that I drove in about 2009 that was awesome, but it had paddles. So, but then I realized, you know what? That car does come in a manual transmission. It is super exclusive, super rare. One of 20 in the States, one of 30 worldwide. And it is iconic. Last of the V12 manuals that this manufacturer made. So what am I talking about? It is the Ferrari 599 GTB. Awesome, awesome car, six liter, V12 engine, 612 horsepower, revs up to an amazing 8,400 RPMs. And for me, I get the HGTE package, which was a $30,000 option, modified suspension, exhaust, lowered the car a bit, and came on some gorgeous 20-inch wheels. Now, not a lot of these have traded, obviously, because there's only 20 or so. Um, so there's one coming up in July on auction, so we'll see if it's actually a $500,000 car. My choice, no question about it, Lamborghini Murcielago SV. Now, it might not be stick shift form, but definitely, because those are ranging close to a million dollars, but by far, the Murcielago is one of the most beautiful, graceful, gorgeous vehicles in modern time today. I'd like to see another car in that price category that can beat it. What's up, guys? So if there's one car I'd have to choose for 500,000, I am a little biased. It is the Lamborghini Diablo SE30. This is essentially Lamborghini's F40. It's raw, it was produced inspired by racing. So this is a car with roll up windows. Some of the cars didn't even have AC or a radio. The interior is full carbon fiber. Most of the components on the car are carbon fiber. The wheels are magnesium. I could go on and on and on. 150 produced for the world, 25 for the US. I don't think it gets better. 
And there's even a little kit that they produce for 26 cars called the Yoda. Another 100 horsepower, so 600 horsepower. Unfortunately, Yodas are close to 700 to probably a million dollars today. But for 500,000, it's definitely gonna be an SE30. $500,000 budget this week, and it probably isn't gonna surprise anybody that I'm gonna go with a red car. Some of you might know that I'm fortunate enough to work with the manufacturer of these red cars, demonstrating the cars, presenting the cars, and teaching dealership personnel all about them, so I'm fairly familiar with them. And if I had half a million dollars burning a hole in my pocket, my pick would be that bad boy right there, the 488 Pista. Having said that, if it's my money, that's not my pick. I'm actually going with that car's predecessor, the 458 Speciale. Now look, it's true that the Pista will absolutely murder the Speciale, in every objective category you can possibly think of. But if you get the chance to sit in a 458 Speciale and pull that thing to its 9,000 RPM redline and hear that V8 make the noises that it makes, you will understand instantly why the numbers don't always tell the full story. So for me, 458 Speciale is my pick. And if you agree with me and you're not follically challenged, maybe you go for the Aperta. What up, Vinwicky crew? It's Damon from Daily Driven Exotics. Ed hit me with, what is the $500,000 car I would invest my money into that I would buy? And right now, well, it's pretty simple for me. I didn't get it for 500, so I was very fortunate, but this car is sitting around a little less, little over the $500,000 mark. It is the manual gated LP640 Murcielago. Just like Ed, I have one myself. It's yellow, currently being wrapped a secret new color, which we will reveal soon. But that is, hands down, my favorite car for 500K at this time. Thank you all, great answers as always. If you have a better idea, please be sure to let us know in the comments. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please be sure to subscribe. I hope you're enjoying watching them as much as we're enjoying making them. You're here because you like a good car story. But let's be honest, we've probably watched enough YouTube videos for a lifetime during the pandemic. It's time to get out of the house and make a story of your own. Extreme Experience puts you in the driver's seat of some of the world's most exciting cars, like this 2020 Corvette C8, at over 30 racetracks across the country. And right now, we're giving away $50,000 for the track experiences and 30% off everything on our website. Head to xxspeed.com to learn more today.